Hello, everybody. This is Professor Tchaikovsky. Welcome. Uh, this video is being, this is a tribute to the uh, GAP41 students cohort of, what would they be? Oh, they would be the cohort of 2021. That sounds right. I don't know. Let's go ahead and play this out. So I we're now going to do exercise 22-9. Uh, with the Wiley Plus homework question that I was asked to go through and solve. Uh, this textbook authors are Don Kiso, Jerry Weingant, and Terry Warfield. The question used in this presentation is copyright 2019 by John Wiley and Sons. All rights are reserved. This is for educational purposes only. The video may not be distributed or redistributed without the express permission of Wiley. The solution presentation is copyright 2019 to 2022 by Bennett Tchaikovsky. All rights are reserved. The opinions contained within this presentation are those of Bennett Tchaikovsky and not the authors of the textbook or of Wiley. Okay, so let's go through and take a look at this particular question. So I, Zarina, I'm calling you out by name because you sent me text, so I'm going to call you out. I, You asked me to do this exercise 22-9, which is basically the same thing as this bramble, just like the numbers or the names have been changed to protect the innocent. So let's go through and kind of go through and take a look at this. So we've got sales, we've got COGS, we've got gross profit, we've got expenses, we have net income. And then we're going to have retain earnings, beginning, net income, and dividends, retained earnings, ending. And so we're going to say as is, as is. I will maybe make this a little bit different. Uh, so 2021, 2020, going through over here, we got sales of 340,000, uh, cost of sales 200. So my gross profit is 140, expenses are 88. So my net income is 52,000. For 2020, I've got 270,000, 142. So this means my gross profit is going to be 128. My expenses are 50,000. So my net income is going to be 78,000. My beginning retained earnings were 72,000. My net income is basically going to be 78. My dividends ending of 25. So my ending retained earnings will be 125,000. My ending in one year becomes my beginning the next. Net income 52,000 dividends, 30,000. And so my ending retained earnings are 147. So again, just pull these numbers here uh, right from the problem itself. So first one over here is Denise Hab decided to switch his depreciation method from some of the year's digits to the straight line method. By the way, I'm gonna just say this, uh, some of the year's digits, I've said the story before, but it's gonna, I'm gonna repeat myself, which is fine because, you know, Zarina, you wanted this video. So I'm gonna put in my little expletives and the accounting world. So Haskell and White, great accounting firm here in Orange County. They hosted a round table years ago and they had a former examiner from the Securities and Exchange Commission. When I go to these things, I always like to ask questions. Like one of the questions I have asked is, do you ever use some of the year's digits? This guy had reviewed like 10,000 filings and he looks at me, he ponders and he says, well, I have, but they don't call it that. So that's, that's when, when you're talking about some of the year's digits, you know, it's got to be a Wiley question or something arcane on the CPA exam. So we've got over here, it basically says, Denise Habe decided to switch its depreciation method from some of the year's digits to straight line. The assets were purchased at the beginning of 2020 for 100000 with an estimated useful life of four years and no salvage value. The 2021 depreciate income statement contains depreciation expense of 30 on the assets purchased at the beginning of 2020. So we need to know where some of the year's digits come from, right? So this is an accelerated depreciation method. The way we do it, we have it's the assets going to last for four years. Four, three, two, one. 
earth below us nothing falling no that's uh that i think it's major tom let's actually no i can't play that or i'm gonna get in trouble so basically what we do with the depreciation is you're gonna go like this and when we add this up it's gonna get me to 10 out of 10 right 10 out of 10 stars right that's the review you better be giving me for this video so right over here in year one in 2020 if my acquisition cost for this asset was 100 grand, right? Right, the amount of depreciation I would have taken would have been, and there's no salvage value. So it'd be 100,000 minus zero times four divided by 10 or 40,000. In year two, right, this is year one, or this would be 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023. So coming over here for year two, now you see this number right over here, they took 30,000 at the beginning of 2020. So over here, well, how did they get that number? Well, they took 100,000 and they multiplied that by three divided by 10. Now, what they're saying it went through and did was, is that when we have this, and this is something I knew I learned, this is something new, this is something new that I learned today, always exciting. So we don't change the past what we would do is we would say we've moved from some of the year's digits to straight line. So 2020 for the depreciation, we're not going to change. We're going to basically leave this expense here as it is. We're not going to change that. What we will do, though, is for 2021, the current expenses right now are at 88000 right? So my current expenses are at 88000 for 2021. So right over here. And this includes 30,000 of depreciation expense. So my non depreciation expenses are going to be 58,000. So now what I need to do is I need to recompute my depreciation expense for 2021 using the new method. However, what I did though was, is I took 40,000 of depreciation last year. So now in terms of my depreciable base, this is gonna be 100,000 minus the 40,000 I already took of depreciation in 2020, right? We can't go through and change that. This is gonna give me 60,000. At this point in time, using straight line, right? The asset has a four year life. This year is already passed, so I have three years remaining. So this, I'm going to divide this by three. There's no salvage value. So over here, the amount of depreciation expense I should be going through and recording is going to be $20,000. Okay, so my depreciation expense revised for 2021 is going to be 20000 bucks. So now over here, my total... My total expenses, total revise for 21, this is going to be 78000 So this number here does not change. We'll call this revised. Okay, so coming right over here, my new amount of my expense basically for the year. right over here for 2021 is going to be 78,000, okay? This 50,000 over here does not change, okay? So this is going to be the same. This is the only error that we basically went through and saw in terms of this. Now, this next one kind of threw me for a little bit of a loop, at least basically at first. So let's go through and read this. In 2021, the company discovered that the ending inventory for 2020 was overstated by 24,000 and ending inventory for 2021 is correctly stated. Okay, so honestly, when you see something like this, you might get really freaked out, right? That's kind of what happened to me. But then I decided to work at Cremistry. And I burned myself and I said, well, I might be a little bit better off as an accountant because I don't uh, have that ability to sue Cremistry for the lawsuit on my hand. There you go. Okay. 
So enough about that. Let's come right over here, Zarina, and let's take a look at uh, inventory. So when I look at inventory for 2020, right, our cost of goods sold was 142,000. Now, what I want you to do is just, we're gonna imagine some numbers, right? So let's just pretend, let's just create some stuff and we'll see what this is like, okay? So we'll say that, and what does our inventory account look like? It's our beginning inventory plus our purchases minus our cost of goods sold equals our ending inventory. So let's just make up some numbers and get this to work. So over here, beginning inventory is say 100,000. We'll say purchases, we're gonna be, I don't know, 150,000. So my ending inventory, Again, I'm making these numbers up and I'm gonna show you why I'm doing this momentarily. So my ending inventory right over here, right, as is, because my cost of goods sold was 142, this is pretend, right? So my ending inventory right now, if I'm pretending, right, beginning inventory plus purchases minus 142 for cost of goods sold is 108. Now, if I come over here and do this, it says that the company discovered that the ending inventory for 2020 was overstated by 24,000. So this is the overstatement. And if we actually went through and said that this was overstated by 24,000, that means my ending inventory really should have been 84,000. So when I look at this over here, right, what I'm going to have to go through and do is to change my cost of goods sold, right? So what is cost of goods sold going to be now? Well, it's going to be 100 plus 150 minus 84, or now it's going to basically be 166,000. So if my ending inventory was overstated, right, there was too much here by 24,000, I reduced it. That means my cost of goods sold is going to go up. When I see these types of questions, I really don't like them. But the way that I kind of get comfortable with them is I'm going to go through and make up numbers. Okay, so for 2020, right, our sales aren't changing. But my new cost of goods sold is now going to be higher by the amount of the overstatement. Okay, so over here. My new cost of goods sold now is going to be 166. So my gross profit is going to be 104,000, right? So my net income is now going to be 54,000. Okay. So when I look over here at 2020, so this is my income statement. I'm now going to go through and look at 2020. My beginning retained earnings did not change. But my net income is now 54000 My dividends have not changed. My retained earnings ending is now going to be my beginning plus my net income, my revised income right up from over here. Okay. Minus my dividends, which haven't changed, is giving me my ending retained earning balance. For 2021, my ending retained earnings becomes my beginning retained earnings, okay? So now what I need to do is I know that my sales over here is now at 340. So let's kind of go through now and take a look at what happened now over here. So this overstatement is gonna translate into the next period, right? So. If we had basically over here going through and doing some more pretending. So this is 2020 pretend, 2020 to go through and correct the overstatement. If I come over here for 2021 and I kind of go along over here on the same logic, right? Over here, my ending basically over here, my ending inventory initially would have been 108,000. This is prior to any sort of adjustment. My cost of goods sold basically for 2021 is gonna be 200,000. 
right? What I'm going through and doing is I'm going through and making up numbers, right? And you'll see why in a moment. If my purchases, we'll call this maybe, I don't know, uh, 160,000. So if I wouldn't have made, so again, what I'm doing right now is I'm basically saying, okay, I'm pretending still. What if I continue to use the same numbers that I went through and made up on my previous example, right? So I kept this pretend ending inventory right over here. I brought in basically the cost of goods sold, which was initially was 142 and then I've got 200. And so now I'm following along with what happened with this particular error. So that was my 2021 pretend. Now let's do our 2021 revised. Okay, so if I look at this over here in terms of my beginning inventory, right? So, okay, so over here, we said that the ending inventory was correct. Again, I just made up a number. But now my beginning inventory for 2021 basically becomes with dealing with the overstatement Basically over here, it becomes this 84,000. Now, the challenge that I have, right, is when I went through and did this over here, right, the challenge is now because I'm changing this number and they said the ending inventory was correct, this is going to change my cost of goods sold to 176,000, right? So... Basically, this is changing. This is going to bring the number down. This is how an overstatement impacts a later year because they're saying that the ending inventory is correct. So my cost of goods sold over here for 2021, instead of being 200,000, right? This is now going to be 176,000. Okay. So... My gross profit over here is going to be 164. My net income is going to be 164 minus the 78,000, right? Why is this 78? Because again, going back to the depreciation, we don't change the past. We're focusing on the future. That's what's going through and happening. Okay. So now with going in tier to this, my new net income, it's going to be 86,000. My dividends have not changed. So my ending retained earnings is going to be 157,000. And if you kind of think about it, right, do we know if we did this correctly? Well, the error for this, this raised our cost of goods sold in 2020. This lowered our cost of goods sold in 2021 by the same amount. So that was kind of a wash. But what we really did is we reduced our expenses because if we had kept using some of the year's digits, we would have had 30,000 in depreciation expense. In this case over here though, we only had 20,000. So our ending retained earnings is 10,000 higher. So another way of going through and looking at it. So to my GAP 4-1 cohort, let's go through now, or my GAP, I should actually clarify, you're the GAP 2021 cohort. So there you go. Special shout out. So let's now go through and do the same exact question with different numbers, because I know that that's what you want, because you're trying to go through and plug this in because, uh, well, you've been assigned a question and you've asked me to help you out from me a lifeline, phone a friend. So whatever you're going to go through and do. So we got 365, 218, 147, 89, 100. Love those numbers. Uh, 266, 146, uh, 120. Okay, 48,000. God, that's so nice. How lovely. 716. Okay, so this is going to be 72,700, 716. The dividends were 24, so this is 12300. That comes from over here. My net income is 579, and this is going to be 27,700. So 150,500. So 
let's go over here. So basically, <laughs> now we've got Bramble decided to switch his depreciation from some of the year's digits to straight line. The assets were purchased at the beginning of 2020 for 100500 So let's come over here. Okay. So coming over here, Zarina, we've got to stay awake here, right? Very important to do, especially during final exams. So we're going to come right over here. Okay. So we had over here. So we've got four, three, two, one. Okay, so in terms of the revision, right, over here, we know that we're not going to go through and change the 2020 expenses for the depreciation, right? We also know that sales are not going to change beginning retain earnings. We also know that dividends will not be going through and changing, but we do need to figure out what's going on here just in terms of going through so we can compute depreciation for the remaining years. Okay, so... If we take four divided by 10 times 105,000, this would be 105, 100, excuse me. Whoa, almost blew that one. 100,500. So this is going to give me 40,200. This over here times three divided by 10 is 30,150. Ah, that's where that number is coming from. So if we look at the current expenses, Right. So the current expenses for 2021, the current expenses over here are a total of 89,100. So the depreciation included in 2021, remember, we're not going to do anything with 2020, but I'll show you why we had to compute that first one momentarily. So over here, so without depreciation, we're at 58,950. So in order though, for me, I've got 100,500. I'm gonna subtract 40,200 because I've already gone through and depreciated that. And I only have three years left when I switch to straight line. So over here, this is going to give me 100,500 uh, minus 40,200 divided by three or 20,100. How nice these numbers nicely work out. Okay, so with, so basically over here, my expenses without depreciation, any depreciation was 58,000, 58,950. The new straight line is gonna be 20,100. Remember, why is it three? I've got three years left. I don't go back through and restate the first one, but I needed to compute it in order to figure out because I can't, once I take depreciation, I would over depreciate the asset. So my new expenses are going to be over here at 79,050. Okay. So coming right over here, my revised expenses for 2021 are going to be 79,050. Okay, so that I don't go through and re-explain myself because I don't really want to do it, it's the same thing. They discover that the ending inventory for 2020 was overstated by 26,000. Ending is correctly stated, so right? So it's it's essentially almost like the same deal, right? So let's look at what happened previously. So my expenses went up from 142 to 166. So what I'm going to go ahead and do then, now that I know what the trick is, I'm going to take my cost of goods sold and I'm going to add in 26,000. So over here, so my new cost of goods sold is basically going to go through and be... For 2020, my new cost of goods sold is going to be the 146 plus the 26,000. At the same time, I know that my cost of goods sold, because now that the beginning inventory is less, that's going to impact my cost of goods sold for the next year, and that that error is going to flow through. 
this is going to be 218 minus 26,000. Okay, so right over here. Okay, so now that I've gone through, I've increased my cost of goods sold here for 2020. So now over here, my gross profit is 94,000. My expenses are 48,4. So my net income is 45,600. So I come down over here, my beginning retained earnings that has not changed. My dividends have not changed, but I have a new net income based on the overstatement of the cost of goods based on the understatement of the cost of goods sold. So this 94,300 becomes my beginning retained earnings for the following period. For 2021, I decreased my cost of goods sold similar to what I went through and did up here on this question. So over here, my gross profit is going to be 173,000. So my net income is going to be 93,950. Over here, 93,950. My dividends over here, 27,700. So my ending retained earnings is going to be 160,550. Let's think about where that's coming from. So over here, my new uh, my new ending retain earnings is higher by 10,050. Where is that coming from? Well, I should have ultimately have gone through, and I originally went through to compute this, I used 30,150 using some of the year's digits. Remember, I did not change anything for 2020. My new amount of my depreciation expense under straight line was 20,100. So this is basically where that difference is going through and coming from. Again, if you go back to make sense for yourself, right? Make, put numbers around it, make up some stuff and then say, oh, this is basically the inventory was overstated. So that means my ending inventory is going to be less. That means I must have had higher cost of goods sold. And then this over here is going to translate over here. And this will end up decreasing my cost of goods sold if my ending inventory isn't changing. So Zarina, hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully you don't burn me at creamistry next time I come by. And I want that. Actually, I need to come by to your creamistry. I think I should get free creamistry. So you need to let me know when one of your friends is like working there so I can go in there and mention this video and get 150% off. No, you don't have to pay me anything. But it would be kind of entertaining to see you zap me with nitrous. Well, not really. In any event, I want to thank all of you for being here today. Uh, best of luck on your exams. Uh, thank you, Wiley. And I look forward to seeing you on future videos. Have a great day.